Okay, in this video, I'm going to just walk through the, um, the bargaining model from the um, the, the PowerPoint on, on uh, game theory. Uh, I'm skipping some of the introductory stuff here because I think you can read about that. So if you haven't clicked through that PowerPoint yet, please please do that first. This is just um, the numerical model that I'm working through here. Um, so this is somewhere in the middle of that presentation. So here are the numbers we're going to use to solve this Z, the amount of money that the firm and um, the management, rather, and the union have to divide up is $100. Delta equals 0.9, which means that every time um, they fail to agree and they move into another round of, of negotiation, they lose 10% of that profit. Okay, so 90% is what remains every time. X3 here is the way that the arbitrator is going to divide everything up at the end. And in this case, it's 0.5, which means that um, since X always represents what management gets, management gets 50%, union gets whatever's left over, which would be the other 50%. Of course, I could have picked, you know, X3 to be high, which means the arbitrator is going to side with management, or low, which means the arbitrator is going to side with, uh, with the union. Our unknowns are X1 and X2. In other words, the offer that management will make and the offer that the union will make in the two rounds. Okay. So uh, at the end, there's a general version. I'm not going to work through that general version here because it's more complicated. So this is what the game looks like. In round one, uh, management's going to make an offer. The union can either accept or reject that offer. Now, so the management's offer is going to be some variable x1. We don't know what it's going to be yet. We're solving for that. But it's going to be some fraction. And so they're going to say, we get x1 and you get everything else. So if there's $100 to be divided up, then we would just multiply that by the fraction that management has proposed. So if management said x1 equals 0.75, then that's what, what they're saying is we'll get 75%, which is $75, and you'll get 25%, which is uh, $25. If the union rejects that offer, then we move into round two. The total that's available has been decreased by 10% from uh, 100 to 90. So the union is going to make an offer x2, which is a share for management to keep, management will either accept or reject that. If the management accepts it, then the management gets x2 times 90, and the union gets what's left over, 1 minus x2 times 90. So if the union says we um, are going to propose 50%, then the management would get 45, and the union would get 45. If management rejects that offer, it goes to arbitration. Because we assume that the arbitrator is going to split whatever's left in half, then this 90 gets reduced by 10% to $81, right? Because that'd be 0 0.9 times 90. So half of $81 is $40, 50 cents for each side. Okay? So this is the basic setup of the game. We're going to solve this using backwards induction, which means we're going to start in round two and analyze what would happen if we made it to round two. And then given that result, we can analyze what would happen in round one before it. So looking at um, round two here, see that the union makes an offer, and management will either accept or reject that offer. If uh, management accepts that uh, offer, they get $90 times whatever that offer was, you know. Uh, if they reject it, it goes to arbitration and they get 40 50 with certainty. So obviously, the management is going to reject the union's offer if it ends up with them getting less than $40.50. Right? Because they could, if the union says, you only get $30 and we get 60 then management will say, forget it, let's go to arbitration and I'll get 40 50 You know, and so that's better. So the management is going to accept any offer less than forty dollars and fifty cents um, so the lowest offer that they would accept would be an offer that was exactly equal to forty dollars and fifty cents or maybe forty dollars and fifty one cents you know if you wanted to think about it that way but they'll accept anything uh, at or above forty dollars and fifty cents and they'll reject anything below forty dollars and fifty cents um, so in order for this 90 times x2 to be equal to 40, 50, x2 has to be equal to 0.45. You can just solve that here by taking the 90 and dividing it by, uh, into both sides. So 40, 50 divided by 90 gives us 45%. In other words, the, the lowest offer they will accept is if the union says you get 45% and we get 55%. In that case, management is just as well off as if they go to arbitration, so they'll accept the offer. Well, the union's not going to offer more than they have to. There's no reason to do that. So if management will accept an offer of $40.50, which is 45% of the 90 that's left over, um, then that's the highest the union would be willing to, to, to offer them. Okay. So we got to think about it this way. If the union makes that offer of uh, x2 equals 0.45, so the management gets $40.50, um, 
then the union is going to get $90 times 1 minus that x2, which in this case is 0.45, so $90 times 1 minus 0.45. Uh, and if you do that math, it's $49.50. So um, if the union makes an offer, the minimum offer that management will accept, the union gets this, $49.50. If the union makes a smaller offer, we know management will reject it, and then the union will be stuck in arbitration getting $40.50. So which would the union rather have, $49.50 or $40.50? Well, obviously, it's $49.50. It's bigger than $40.50. So the union would prefer to make the offer such that management will accept it. Uh, so they're going to offer x equals 0.45. You get 45% of this 90 that's left over. Um, and we know with certainty that, um, that that's the offer that they're going to make. Management's going to accept it. And so the outcomes are that um, management gets 40.50 and the union gets 49.50. Okay. Well, we can adjust our drawing to show that. We're going to get rid of all this stuff that's sort of in grayed out here because none of this matters. That we're not ever going to be in arbitration. The union is going to, if it gets to this point, the union is going to make an offer that management will definitely accept, and this will be the outcome. Okay. Um, the reason we know this is going to happen is because the union can offer the management at least as much as they'll get out of arbitration um, and still make themselves better off, which is the case here. Right? Management's no worse off compared to arbitration, and the union's definitely better off. So the union will definitely do this. In other words, what we're saying is if it goes to round two, then this is how round two will end. So we can replace our entire drawing go back to the original drawing and replace everything underneath round two with this. Round one is going to occur if the union rejects the offer, then this is the ending. You know, there's no reason to think about the rest of it because it's not going to happen. So now we can analyze round one in the same way. Okay? If it lasts until round two, this is the outcome with certainty. Okay? So we should ask what kind of offer will the union accept or reject? Well, the union is going to reject any offer from management in round one that leads to the union getting less than 49.50. Because if the un if the management says you get less than 49.50, that's our offer, the union will reject it, it'll go round two, and we know what will happen in round two, and the union will end up with 49.50. Um, so in other words, the, um, the uh, lowest offer that the union will accept is an offer where they get 49.50. And in order for that to happen for 49.50, uh, to be what they get, x1 has to be equal to 0 0.505. In other words, management has to say, we'll take 50.5%, you get 49.5%. That 49.5% of the 100 is 49.50, and that's the best the union could expect to do otherwise. So the union uh, would be willing to accept that offer of letting management keep 50.5%, and they would keep 49.5%, because it's not possible for them to do better than 49.5% or rather $49.50. Um, so management offers this, if management offers this 50.5%, the union will accept it, and the management will get 50-50. If the management offers less than, than this um, the offer here, or this share, I should say a greater X1, which is less for the union. But if the management makes a worse offer, the union will reject it, and we'll, we, the union will get this. The management will get this. In other words, we can just compare the fact that if management says we'll take 50.5%, which is $50.50, the management can get that. If management tries to go for more, it's going to go to round two, in which case management's going to end up with less, 40.50. So really, we know that management is going to make this offer of 50.5% for management and 49.5% for the union because that's the best they can do. If they let it continue, if they try to get more, it'll continue, and if they let it continue, they're hurt by that. Um, so we know that this game is going to end in the first round. Okay? The management is going to make the order of offer of $50.50. The union will accept it. So this is how it will, uh, will turn out. Management can never do better than that. By trying to offer more in the first round, they push the negotiation further, which reduces how much there is to split up, and they actually reduce their maximum outcome to $40.50, which is no good. So they'll offer this and they'll accept it. The union is happy to accept this because this is the most that they could get. If it went to round two, this is what they would end up with um, because we know how round two will end. So both of them realize that they can't do any better than this. And so uh, management's happy to make this offer and the union is happy to accept it. And so there are some other points that are made um, in the other PowerPoint, uh, in the complete PowerPoint. And so I think that uh, you want to make sure that you check that out. Okay.